deal with. We have to live day by day thinking that everything is going to be all right for our environment, for the people around us, for the animals that live and seclude us with their love. As weird as that sounds, peace, love, and joy, kind of like the 60s, it's more like there have a lot of things that there have been a lot of things that have been changing in our world ever since we started producing a lot of activity with fossil fuels. Gas prices have always been elevated or, or decreased due to good times and World War peace times, if you want to be exact. But sometimes things increase constantly. For instance, it was just very low. It was two something, and that was phenomenal for everyone. But the barrel price has increased. Why? Because people are greedy, and that's how business is, and that's how it is for everything. Sadly, but true. And with a world, a world with business people, to be correct and precise, can change how we feel or what we do in this world. There are very, a lot of places, there are a lot of places that are very conscious with being active in the community and being eco-friendly. If we aren't eco-friendly, we can cause a lot of issues within our planet. For instance, Lately, there have been increases of weird temperatures and decreases in specific temperatures where it's supposed to be hot. But due to the fact of global warming, which people believe is quote-unquote not real, or, for instance, um, the greenhouse effect or the ozone layer having a hole in it as not real, but that is a different matter. In Saudi Arabia, which is one of the hottest, not one of the hottest places, but very hot, as you can think, kind of like a desert-like feel, Middle East type of stuff, um, there have been, there have been, this, this actually came in the news this year, that there was so much snow that people asked permission to build snowmen. Uh, weirdly, they asked permission, but the fact that there's snow in a hot place like that, Florida has been increasingly getting colder, and I have yet had to use the term that I'm super hot while living in Florida for several years. This summer is one of the um, one of the exceptions, of course, because it is kind of hot, but not as hot as it used to be. We used to reach the hundreds, we used to be high 90s, but it has yet to happen, which is very odd, isn't it? Usually when it's cold or supposed to be cold, it's rainy and wet, usually every Christmas, but now it's the point where it's actually getting cold, even if it is a week after Christmas or a week before. And now this brings us down to the part where what can we do to make sure that our world isn't declining or causing itself to collapse within our own purposes and our own doings? There have been many people who have been wanting to make a change in our environment and who want to do more to make sure that we can live efficiently, that we don't lose things that we take for granted. For instance, there's some issues such as Like I mentioned before, fossil fuels are creating such an issue, and here in the United States, the reason why it's so expensive to buy these, or well, to buy gas or oil is because of the fact that we aren't using our own oil, or fossil fuels, excuse me. But that's not the issue. Other people are using their own, and other people are still, like, looking for more fossil fuels, but the fact that we're using it and it's corroding and it's going into the air is causing the air supply to be not as clear or pure as it used to be several hundred years ago, several hundred years ago, excuse me, and that's becoming a problem. For instance, there are a lot of cities that are known for their smog, um, one of them being LA. It is said that even climbing, well, climbing, hiking, and my friend has witnessed this, hiking up the mountain top that looks over the city, you can see a clear screen of smog. And that's not okay. We shouldn't be living in that. We're causing ourselves to die. Not only us, but the environment around us. The environment shouldn't be affected by our choices. And this goes to transportation, which is the issue that I'm trying to talk about right now, besides the pollution and, oh, the corrosion and oil spills in the ocean. That's something I just added right now that I actually meant to say before. Um, Our oceans aren't as clean as they used to be. Oil spills, we try to cover it up with, oh, it was a mistake, or, oh, it's clean, but it is not. There's been so many things, what was it, BP oil spill, which was horrendous, it was humongous, and it was everywhere. And how tires were thrown into the ocean as well was not a good thing, and it's causing a lot of acidic issues within the ocean, and the fish and the animals who feed off the ocean. Like, you don't break the food chain in that way to provide something to happen like that. So, what do we need to do? 
our transportation leads to these corruptions and corrosions and impacts on life and animal life and environmental things. Thus, we have to become eco-friendly. Tesla, which I've mentioned in a, pri a previous speech prior to this one, um, is one of the, not few, but one of the many cars. And Elon Musk is one of the many, many very many people who want to put a stop to this nonsense of, hey, let's stop making cars that just shoot out gas in a way that's just so harmful that if you were to stand right next to it you can ruin your looks he's saying why don't we use solar power you know and there's other hybrid cars and electrical cars they're like why don't we just use electricity why don't we use solar panels why don't we use cooking oil why don't we use vegetable oil like why not and people are becoming selfish and patenting these things to make sure that other people don't use it which is a good way for their business to um, fly, but how is it going to result in impacting all of us? It's not a good thing. It's not a great thing. Things won't remain beautiful. Things won't remain clean. People will take it for granted and it'll be gone. With water levels rising as it does, we might lose half of Florida. And that might sound really crazy, but I'm being honest. There's a lot of things that have been said by scientists that have caused part of Florida to be missing. Basically, Think of the United States and every other country. The ridges around their country will be moved inward so that it's a smaller country. So basically Florida, um, Washington, California, parts of Mexico, New Mexico-ish inwards, New York, New Jersey, Long, Long Island. There's a lot of places that can go under just because of the effects that we're pushing on ourselves. The polar caps are melting, the global warming is consisting, and we don't put a stop to this. We protest, we protest, we protest, but we need to put our hand down on something like this. We need to stop. And BMW has been working on things like that as well. They've been working with um, Tesla, which Tesla's been making their ion chargers for their electrical and hybrid cars. So Elon Musk has basically set the standard for the electrical and hybrid and has been cooperating with BMW and Toyota and, um, sorry, excuse me, uh, uh, Volkswagen and so forth to make sure that that type of transportation is now fixed and proper. Now, I personally have traveled to Switzerland myself and I've seen the electrical magnetic, the electrical magnetic trains and I think that they're amazing. They don't emit anything that's gross into the air. They're very smooth. They're very self-serving. They're very efficient. They're more efficient than the ones in New York, which I've seen. I have yet to see the ones in California. Excuse me. But that's the issue. Like, why is it that it's America emitting all these things and then telling everybody that it's okay, but it's not? We need to make our transportation more efficient, like the ones I saw in Switzerland, like the ones that I saw in France, like the ones that I saw in England. Like, we don't do this. We take buses that aren't connected to electrical magnetic rigs so that they can power the vehicle throughout the course of where it's supposed to go, thus providing less smog, less gas usage. It's reduced. It's not efficiently done due to the fact that it is a big vehicle or an SUV or like whatever you want to call it. It's a bus, but they can get there. there we have enough minds in the world to make other substitutions and other types of um, types of types of oils or gases, which we shouldn't even call gases or oil, we should call it different types of fluids, like, you know, a substitute. There's a substitute for people who are vegan who want to eat meat, you know, or who need that type of vitamins from meat, you know, and why can't we do that for our cars, why can't we do that for our buses, why can't we do that for trains? Walking is great and dandy, but we have places to be in the 21st century, we need to be, we need to be at work, we need to go here, we need to go there, we need to hang out with friends, we need to do this, we need to send an email, we need to charge our phone. So... How is it that we haven't found another way of making transportation more efficient? How haven't we had the ability to make another type of transportation? And how come we are still being inefficient with how our cars are developed? Sure, there's a lot of breakthroughs and, and progression, like oh, a lot more hybrids, oh, a lot more electricity or electronic cars, but it's not preached about the way that a fast sports car is preached about, you know, like, and then also hybrid and electric cars are not in consumer value ready. They're $80,000. Like the last Tesla that was made, it was, this was made at this price and it's always out of consumer range. So I think that we should come together and produce something that we can all afford as consumers. We have the mid-class and that's how it should be. So let's take our hands for a second and make it all 
become better. The statistics are rising and hopefully there will be there will be a decline soon in the future because hopefully my generation and hopefully the rest of the generations that are still out there will take a chance to see that ignorance isn't bliss in this case and that there needs to be a political advantage and a political aspect where they need to put their minds in a better place and a better head on their shoulders and stop being like business, business, business. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm a very in between person. Republican for the business aspects because I love business, but Democrat because I am for the people and I think that they deserve a lot of things. We'll use that term lightly because everybody thinks that they deserve everything. But the fact of the matter is, is that we all need to work together to stop this. This is a big crisis that everybody's putting under hand and it needs to be treated differently. It's a big big thing just like obesity just like diseases just like cancer this is the same thing and not everybody's holding that as close as it should be and like i said cancer is a strong word pollution should be just as strong let's make a change and let's try to be more eco-friendly thank you for listening to my speech